All right. I have three windows open here from the course. One is the course outline. Today is October 14th. So today is the deadline for our question of the day number three. It's the one that starts this, this unit all about vector versus raster imaging. We're learning more about it as we go. Uh, proving ground number two is due by 11.59 tonight. So that has two components of the rubric. And I have that open here. One is to post your three thumbnail sketches, small sketches, pretty fast sketches, but they need to think in terms of what qualities a logo should have. Clear, engaging, versatile. So they are not all about lots of detail. They're about kind of clean, solid shapes because they're going to get turned into a black shaped logo. So simplify, simplify, simplify as much as you can to get to what you want. The second part as it says in the rubric, is to then post at least one response to a, a classmate where you indicate, like I say up on the whiteboard here, your clear preference for one of their designs. And say why. Not just, I like all of your work. These are so good. Because that's nice to hear, but that's not actually going to give them the, the feedback for understanding what's working in, in one of their approaches more than something else. Right? Doesn't mean you have to follow their input, but it's always good to get external eyes at this point in the process. So once you've done those two things, you've posted your three sketches, many of you have, thank you, then you're just gonna use this reply button underneath a post, and you can definitely do more, and you would look at them, and I'll pick on Meg here, because she, she's not in class yet, and we have a central symmetrical one, which I'm going to say isn't really central symmetrical, right? It's more dynamic because it's angled to the side. And I can see all those shapes. I can see how that would work as black shape logo. I see the dynamic. I can see how that can work as black shape logo. And I can see a play of positive and negative with the empty space spilling in. And of these, I think my favorite of the concept are both the, the, the first one and the last one. And I think the last one is going to work the best as black shapes. So I might write that, especially because Meg's not here, so this is helpful to her. You can give a second choice if you like, but I'm, I'm going to say why, right? So why do I like this one the best of the three? Because I think it will scale the best as black shapes, which means it will be really easy to tell what it is. It's clear uh, at multiple sizes. The symmetrical sketch is my second choice, but it isn't drawn symmetrically like your positive negative space one is. And you don't need to phrase it perfectly. It's fine. I'll put a slash there. All right. So this input will help you get eyes on your choices right and then the next step is to do a refined sketch where you really design your approach and since i gave input to meg that i liked aspects of this but it's not really symmetrical she might then take that to understand oh maybe there's things in this that i can incorporate into this for that approach or maybe what i really want to do is this one so i'm going to try to make it a little bit more of a play of positive and negative space, maybe by opening up, I don't know. It's interesting. I actually really do like that one too. So it's tricky. But input is always helpful. Okay. How can we think about this? Well, if we go up to the very top of the proving ground, and how do we get to the proving ground? This is 
a little different than what we've had before, right? All of this is in the unit module, but it's the unit module after group presentations. So it's unit nine, like it says in our, in our course outline, we're working on unit eight and unit nine because our pr group presentations are next class, not next class, sorry, next week, next Monday. So those are going on. Our vector design is unit nine, and part of that is the proving ground. So you can get to it that way after going through the question of the day and the past examples, and you get to this page. Or you can shortcut to it like you can with all assignments, except for questions of the day, by going to assignments and scrolling down, and you'll see assignment four, but part of assignment four is the proving ground. So proving grounds are always green. The assignments are always the red. So we can also get to it that way. Now, what's nice about the assignments page is we also have some resources. We have a link to my basic presentation on logos that we've looked at, right? But if we go a little bit further in that, beyond just what a good logo is and beyond the three approaches, central, symmetrical, dynamic, and a play of positive and negative space that you're trying to do with your thumbnails, we see some examples. So here are some examples. Central symmetrical, dynamic, play a positive negative space. I chose to go with the dynamic one. Here's professional examples, symmetrical, dynamic, play a positive and negative space. A good way to think of positive negative space is take a dominant shape. So in this case, they took the uh, circle and then take your secondary shape and cut that out of your dominant shape. And so I have examples of that up on the whiteboard as well. Just really simple. So if I'm going to, maybe I'll switch the order of those slides. Let's see. There we go. So if I choose this one after people have given me input, and they say, I, I like the dynamic one. I think it has the most in engagement to it. Then you are going to start making your refined sketch. And your refined sketch cleans it up and defines where the blacks will go. And we're just going to do that within Photopea, just in a raster program. You're going to take your rough sketch, whether you drew it by hand or whether you did it uh, digitally, and we're going to bring it into Photopea, and you're just going to decide where would the black shapes go. I'm showing you all of this to show you kind of the process I'll use sometimes for logo design. I'll photocopy my sketch. I'll clean up my sketch. I'll photocopy it, and then I'll fill it in with with blue line, right? And so this is a, a perfectly acceptable approach to this logo, and so is this. But you can see they make different decisions about what gets filled in with black. Because what you can't have at the end of the day are really fine lines. Those will not scale for a graphic symbol. This is already getting pretty fussy. <laughs> so this is about as far as you can go. And then we're gonna turn that refined sketch using a vector program into a vector. So what's the difference between this and this? Well, this is just pixel based. This is a vector, even with the little vintage distortions integrated into it. Yep. Yeah, it's easy to put textures on and things within vectors. But what's great about the vector is it's infinitely scalable. It's always perfectly clean. And you can add color effects very easily. So we have a little color effect version in the corner there. Now, when you're making your suggestions to your fellow students, these were two Day of the Dead kind of assignments. Past assignments, that was the theme. This was my vector logo. This was my vector line art for my spot illustration, which is assignment five. So if you see sketches that look like this, they'll have a chance to turn that into really cool vector line art, but it does not work for a logo, right? Because it's just way too based on lines. It's not going to turn into clean black shapes. So you want to give the suggestion from the proving ground towards the ones that are going to make the cleanest, clearest black shapes. Simplifying is hard. And this is an example of a concept that is simplified <laughs> right, into a logo. Because it's cool to have that, and we're going to be learning that later. 
this was my example from the morning class for this personal patriotic symbol. This was just the, the cleaned up version of my proving ground sketch. So this becomes my refined sketch. You can also create your refined sketch through compositing, but it can look kind of dead, right? So taking different found elements, bringing them together. But I, I'm using that as my refined sketch. And then what we do is we bring it in to Illustrator. I should actually add that slide. Because we're using Illustrator in the morning class. Here we're going to use one called Vector.com, which is our browser-based freeware. But we're basically going to use the same process in either one. So when you bring it into Illustrator or into a vector program, you're going to be drawing your vectors right on top of your sketch as new paths, just like we built the shape layers on top of our emoji screen grab for exercise two. Same process, except we'll have more tools for making vector shapes. So this is what those actual vectors look like by the end of this morning's class. So tracing a vector or tracing vectors over, I'll call them vector shapes. Google Slides, just like for your group presentations. So your refined sketch is going to be a raster file, but then we turn that into vector shapes. There we go. All right. So first we want to get our different approaches posted into Proving Ground 2, then we want to comment on some classmates' examples, then we're going to choose which one we want to pursue and make our refined sketch. I'll demonstrate that, and then we bring it in to a vector program in order to start tracing our vectors. Lots of ways to do this. You can see how this logo, which is a play of positive and negative space, is entirely made of circles and then two uh, dividing lines or three dividing lines. These are lots of tips on how to use some of the tools I'm going to be introducing today. And then some Illustrator specific tips. So that those are right here on the logo and creation basics page. We have, this will be very helpful to you because this is how to do it using the freeware. And this was by past students. So a mentorship presentation on using VECTR, which is this vector.com, this freeware. And they talk you through it pretty well. So I might even use this as I bring mine in. Because unfortunately, browser-based software keeps changing too. So they'll make little finds, and sometimes you have to figure out where the tools are. But that's a nice little tutorial for you. Okay, next we go in the assignment sheets, and we can see where we post our proving ground. And then right after that is where we're going to post our refined sketches for our assignment four logo. All right. Oh, this is the wrong class. So remember, proving grounds, you want to be really specific to the rubric requirements. 